Todd and Andrew is an international superstar. He's well versed in Italian cuisine, Asian made vehicles, and European soccer. <laughs> Excuse me, football. But management frowns upon Todd and Andrew soccer talk. <laughs> ah, screw it. Let's sneak in some real quick. Oh. Here's 10 seconds of soccer with Todd Lizenby and Andrew. Starting now. Champions League, best news, no Gus Johnson. Juventus, Barcelona, who you got and why, Andrew? I like uh, Barcelona, but I'm more interested in the United States getting the World Cup. It's going to happen 2022. And that was 10 seconds of soccer. Are we done, or do I... We continue, or are we done for the day? No, that's that's all that's we get. It. That's it. Yeah, that's okay. It. Well, it's good not, talking to you guys. It's not 10 seconds plus another five about soccer. Oh, oh, I meant, are we talking about anything else? Actually, that would be funny if we just brought you on for half of 10 seconds and then you just... You know what? what that would be funny. funny if, we're, if it were funny, we'd both be laughing. Andrew Gilman on with us on the Little Caesars Hot and Ready Hotline on 107.7 The Franchise. That would be a good gag, though. Great gag, yeah. Would you ever... Uh, h- how would it work if you if you, uh, if you you had an injured player who you kind of needed to win a championship and it was the championship? Mm-hmm. Would, well, I mean, that's sort of the big question. I mean, didn't, didn't the Nationals sort of deal with that Strasburg issue in years past where... Yeah, they sat him during the season, though. Yeah, and it, but it was... They shut him down at the end of the year. But it, it, yes, you're right. But they were in a playoff race, and I think that I would play a player that's injured in a championship situation. I know the the Strasburg thing doesn't exactly line up, but like with Kyrie Irving, my guess is he's coming to them saying, "I want to play." If he's not, then you've got a way bigger issue than dealing with a championship issue. You've got a player that's not Well, it sounds, according to Brian Winhorse's article, it sounds like he was kind of being challenged to play. Yeah, I, and that, that's an issue. I mean, I, I think that's a life issue more than a if, – if, if you don't want to play in the championship game, I, I can't do anything for you. You know, I mean, it's, it's not on me at that point. If I were David Blatt and he was being challenged to play, I, I would almost pull a Gene Hackman and say, my team's on the floor. See ya. You know, I mean – it, that's why when coaches say are, are taking interviews for other jobs or they want out of a contract, you don't want a coach or you don't want a player who doesn't want to be there. And if you don't, if Kyrie Irving doesn't want to play, why, why put him out there then? Well, does you have to? I mean, he's good. I don't. He's, I, he's, he's beyond good. I he's don't know good. if it's. I don't know if it's that he doesn't want to play. I think he's. If you just... have to say to the guy, dude. No, Steph I, Curry finals. I mean, that, yeah, that, that yeah. No, like I think he. Deal. I think it was just he's afraid to play. Well, he's af- I, afraid I of getting hurt. Too. You know what I mean? Or afraid to play, or afraid to get hurt, or afraid to fail on a big stage. No, because no, no. I, I, I understand all of that stuff. I, I, I would that. say afraid to get hurt again. Okay. Well, that's what I would if, think. But. If what are you saving? Then I would turn it around and say, what are you saving yourself for? So you can be healthy next year against Milwaukee. Money. Or do you want to win a championship this year? I, that's what it all comes down to. Is it money right. or titles? Is it, it, and, what, and what do you value more? Unlike baseball, unlike baseball, we don't know. I mean, I guess a, free, a few freaks would know how many points Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scored in his career. We have no idea. I mean, we we really don't. Or how many how many uh, Michael Jordan scored, or how many steals Kobe Bryant has. Baseball is all numbers. We sort of know Hank Aaron hit 755 home runs or Ted Williams batted 406. In basketball and football, it's all about the titles. We know Joe Montana won four. We don't have any idea that Dan Marino passed for 20,000 yards or 40,000 yards or more than that or less. I have no idea. Andrew so Gilman. in basketball, it's about the title, not about the numbers. Andrew Gilman with us here on 107.7 The Franchise. How much did last night's result change your mind about how these finals are going to go? Uh, I think that it may be a sweep now, so I would say significantly, because that was a great opportunity for Cleveland. I do have uh, done a little bit of research. I'm going to bring a little bit of uh, actual uh, research to the table this time. I know you're not ready for it, nor do you have any music to play behind it. Because oh, 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 contraire, contraire, contraire. Hey, everybody, guess what time it is? It's stat of the day time. Stat of the day. The floor is yours. Oh, wow. Okay. LeBron James took 38 shots last night. His last shot 
in regulation, not the not not overtime, but the one to win it was a twenty one footer. Okay, mm-hmm. only seven shots he, on the evening. Only seven shots were longer or farther away from the basket than the one he took at the end of regulation. He took eight shots, or he took eight shots total, including that one that failed. Four of those shots, of those eight, were in the fourth quarter or in overtime, deep in the fourth quarter of overtime. So my question is, he took so many shots, why isn't he going to the basket? Is he trying to throw the series? Because he's their only chance. Oh, my God. Boop, boop, beep, beep. Dad of the day. That was a hell of a leap you just took, man. I hope. I mean, did you just win the long jump record? Here's the deal. Here's the deal with that. He's gone to the basket over and over and over again. He's taken shots closer and closer. Now, I guess you could make the point that in the fourth quarter, uh, when he did make a three-pointer, and in overtime, he's taken these three-pointers, that the other team is taking away what he does best. You know, they're really locking him up and making him settle. But I think if you're LeBron James, you've got to continue to go for the bas- to the basket because he's he's a great, great shooter, and he's a great clutch player, but that's just really hurting their percentages doing this. Oh, if, if, if the Kyrie stuff didn't happen, that would have been probably my main talking point today. Um, no, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in complete I'm glad a- I can come up with the no. second best thing. No, I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you. I mean, no, I think that's – 21 a- foot fade away. With and you did more statistical left. research than I did as well, so thank you. You're welcome. Twenty-one foot three, uh, twenty-one foot uh, foot fade away with three seconds left is not what LeBron does. Does he make that shot from time to time? Sure, he does. Sure, he does. He makes all sorts of shots. But to me, when he starts doing that late in games, I, I just always think, man, what's going on here? Why is he not doing that? I mean, is does something get to him? And I know that's silly and a giant leap and well, all that it, stuff. But I mean, it also could have been fatigue. I mean, well, the answer to your question fatigue. is clear. LeBron is not a clutch player. Yeah, well, that's definitely it. That's definitely he drives a key. First of all, he drives a Kia, which I didn't know. I saw that commercial in the second quarter, and parks it himself. <laughs> He's a man of the people. He's just like you and me, guys. He, he did. He did. That's why. That's why Russell Westbrook's has, a better human. Has he anyone gives tried, his key away? Has anyone tried LeBron's new Sprite mix? That doesn't seem like. That seems like something you would enjoy, Todd. Actually, I, I don't know. It seems like something that you would really. Why really would I enjoy for. it? I don't know. You seem like a guy that would hang out at the lake and drink a Bud Light Lime and a Sprite mix. Bud Light Lime's not bad. He actually does. Exactly. He does look See? exactly like that. That's true. If, we, if you don't, it's a very like accurate Light, stereotype. If you like Bud, if you like Bud Light Lime, you're going to give LeBron's drink a chance. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Andrew Kilman on the Little Caesars Hot and Ready Hotline. Happy to help. <laughs> um, I got one soccer story for you today. You ready for this? A what? A, a, a soccer story. Is that allowed? Um, it is today. You know, okay. it's it's okay. it's it's my, well, it it's my show. I do it. On, yeah, your do, name is on the show. That's, that's right. right. I do what I want. Um, have you seen this story about Thierry Henry? Be more specific. When do you remember? Was it what world? Was it 2010? Todd, 2010 World Cup. I think it was 2010. Okay. Yeah, okay. I believe so. I, the 2010 World Cup. Um, great Fran- French player. France was playing Ireland in a qualifier in which the winner was moving on to the World Cup. Okay, there was a ball, and I think this this started. Nobody watched this match live, but uh, I think it started to make its way as as people were preparing for the World Cup, as ESPN and others were preparing for the World Cup. I think it's made it the highlight made its way into the mainstream, like on Sports Center and stuff, where a kick that was that looked like it was destined for the back of the net by Ireland okay. was blocked by a purposely red card ishly, if you will, yep. that by, happens. by Thierry Henry's left arm. Yeah, that happens. It went uncalled. Okay. And France ended up winning the match and Ireland was completely irate. Yeah. I sort of remember a little bit of that. Yeah. And, okay. Did he just admit to it or something? Well, there's new with all this FIFA stuff. News has come out that to keep Ireland quiet, FIFA just paid them off to the tune of five million American dollars. Five million U.S. Huh? Well, uh-huh. I mean, so you're suggesting that there's corruption beyond the top levels of uh, international soccer is what you're suggesting, or what this story is suggesting? Um, 
above i don't know i i i I feel i feel like from all the stories i've been hearing this might be below but uh we're talking about corruption inside the game though so it could be yeah absolutely well i for one am going to overact accordingly on something like that yeah i mean of course of course because it makes more sense for uh or maybe they the world cup people didn't want ireland in for whatever reason who knows what the reason is but man there's been all sorts of match match fixing in italy there's been issues in spain there's issues all over the world um, and I think that the reason it doesn't happen in pro sports in the United States anyway is because there's just too much money. Uh, like LeBron, for example, he makes too much to risk, you know, throwing a game, for example, like I suggested earlier, because you just can't offer him enough money. It's not worth it to him. But it might be different at, a, a you know, essentially a, a lower level of international soccer. Right. I'm not shocked, though. Are you shocked by something like uh, that? No, but I, I just... You're more shocked that uh, Caitlyn Jenner won the uh, Arthur Ashe Courage Award. You know how I feel about that. I thought you did some good radio on that. I meant to. I, I wanted to make sure that you knew that I knew that you did some good radio on that the other day. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, no, I'm just saying. Uh, like I, I, I was going to equate it to um, the NFL. Like, assume the rules were written. All right, okay. this is the assumption you got, and Todd. Please bear with me here because this is going to be <laughs> anti-Packers. Assume the rules were written to make Des Bryant's catch a catch. Why do you Thanks. hate the Packers, Zach? But but then the refs still rule incomplete. And okay. we're like, that's wrong. Yeah, they just like botched the play. Like they gave someone four downs instead of or five downs instead of Right. Five. If I told or you, you mean that like in, they called a Hail Mary a catch in the end zone that wasn't really a catch. If they I told you to get the Packers, that's for sure. If I told you that the in the NFL the Cowboys knew that the NFL refs screwed up the rules on the Des Bryant catch in the playoffs and still did it anyway, and the Cowboys were going to expose some rogue refs that all got to go under the hood and check out the play over and over again and still came to the wrong conclusion that the catch wasn't a catch, what would we be doing right now with Roger Goodell? Yeah, I mean... You know what I mean? Like He, he the would answer, lose a lot of public trust. I mean, is that similar to like the Donahue thing in, in the NBA? I think so. Him losing yeah. a lot of public trust is like, you know, me losing a lot of respect from people. I don't have it anyway. Well, he's sort of... His has been eroded away over the last, what, mostly 12 months with anything from Ray Rice to... All the other stuff in between. You're right, but I'd imagine uh, there'd be an appeal hearing from the Cowboys, which Roger Goodell would then hear <laughs> and testify that's right. at. That's right. That's right. That's, I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it would be that would be, be huge. Sort of hard to stomach. It'd be a huge story, and it'd be. I mean, that would be corruption. That would, I mean, obviously be corruption, which is exactly what FIFA's going you through. Think so to watch the game and know that someone is out there affecting the game via the rules. And you just want to be a fan, and you yep. can't be a fan anymore once you hear about that. So I stuff. guess the, the conclusion we came to is uh, FIFA's corrupt. Breaking news. Yeah, exactly. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. That, that's Thanks for taking up all of my time with that long story that had a predictable ending. Have a good weekend, Andrew. <laughs> bye, bye yeah, Andrew. Bye. We had to do it because it's Friday. Andrew, Yeah, that's right, because it's Friday. Andrew Gillen with us on 107.7 The Franchise.